three in the renal problem set, we're asked to determine where in the nephron we would find the highest osmolality when the osmoreceptors are firing at their highest rate. So initially you would probably have the instinct to just dive in and try to guesstimate which area would have the highest osmolality. But what I would suggest for you to do with these problems is to go about it very systematically and make sure that you just go through and at each point indicate what would be the osmolality if ADH is low versus when ADH is high. And this will help to prevent you from making mistakes when you're in the stress of the test. So we're going to represent the osmolalities when ADH is low in red and when ADH is high we will represent those osmolalities in green. So let's just walk through each of our points and talk about what we would expect the osmolalities to be. Okay, so we'll start at A, which is within the proximal convoluted tubule. If ADH is low, we would expect an osmolality of about 300 milliosmoles. And if ADH is high, we would also expect to see an isoosmotic solution of about 300. And that's because ADH doesn't have very much an effect on the proximal nephron structures. Okay. Let's move on to point B. Now point B, it's worth indicating, that's actually in the interstitial fluid. It's not in the nephron structure itself. And you can see that we're about halfway down, let's say, maybe a little bit more than that, into the medulla. So if we were looking at low ADH, we'll just estimate that and say that that would be a value of about 600. And if we have high ADH, we're going to estimate that it would be somewhere around 900 milliosmoles. Now you'll recall from lectures, the reason why the osmolality is higher in that medullary interstitium is because of the presence of urea whenever ADH is released in the insertion of the urea porins. All right, let's then go to C, which is in the thick ascending limb. Now I want you to recall that regardless of whether ADH is high or low, this area is always impermeable to water. Now what we would see is if ADH is low, we would expect a concentration of about 120. If ADH is high, we would expect a concentration within the nephron of the TAL of about 100. Now, the reason why it is slightly lower when ADH is high is because ADH does increase the activity of the NKCC transporters. So that's why you start to see a slight difference between the two at this point. Now, if we continue on through the nephron, you'll recall that when ADH is low, the rest of these nephron structures are still going to be impermeable to water. And even when ADH is high, at least that initial part, the early distal convoluted tubule, is also impermeable to water. So if we look at point D, what we would expect to see if ADH is low is a concentration of about 100 milliosmoles. And if ADH is high, we would expect to see about 300. Now, when ADH is low, the osmolality has still dropped slightly relative to the TAL because we're still going to have continued solute reabsorption. Remember, water can't follow out of the nephron. So we start to see a slight drop from 120 to 100 of the osmolality when ADH is low. Now, when ADH is high, we're going to start to see some water being reabsorbed. So the urine osmolality is climbing and it will even equilibrate with the interstitial fluid surrounding that distal convoluted tubule to be about 300 milliosmoles. Okay, then when we continue down to E, which is at the end of the collecting ducts, we can consider this our final urine that's produced. When ADH is low, we would expect to see a value of about 75, and this is hypoosmotic, so we have a very dilute urine whenever ADH is low and remember that the osmolality is still dropping from 100 to 75 because we're still having some solute reabsorption and the water can't follow. When ADH is high we'll have an osmolality that can range up to about 1200 so this would be a very hyper osmotic solution 
and the urine is very concentrated. Okay. And that's because as we go through that collecting duct, the water is able to be reabsorbed when ADH is high. Urine osmolality will continue to climb and we'll equilibrate with that interstitial fluid so we can reach values up to about 1200 milliosmoles. So I would suggest, first of all, you need to memorize these typical values as you go through the nephron. And I would highly suggest that you write these down each time you're trying to solve one of these problems. So now that we have our background, we can start to talk about the situation that's given where we have osmoreceptors that are firing. So you'll recall from lectures the osmoreceptors are located in the hypothalamus. And they are going to send signals to the posterior pituitary to control the release of the hormone in question, which is antidiuretic hormone. Okay. So if the osmoreceptor shrinks, due to a high extracellular fluid concentration, we will see an increase in the action potentials that are sent to the posterior pituitary. So that will increase our release of ADH. So given the stem, it says when osmoreceptors are firing at maximal rates. So we are looking for a situation where we have high ADH. We want to be looking at the values that are in green. And the STEM asks us, where would be the site of highest osmolality? So if we look at our green numbers, there should be one that pops out. The site of highest osmolality would be here at point E, because we saw that that went up to 1,200 milliosmoles. So the correct answer to this question would be E. Within the end of the collecting duct is where we expect to see the highest osmolality when osmoreceptors have been firing at maximal rates. So I would suggest that as you go through the rest of these problems that are using the same figure that you make sure that you're repetitively asking yourself to go through each of the values in order to determine where the highest and lowest osmolalities would be in different situations in order to make sure that you don't make any mistakes on the exam. Okay. Hopefully this has helped to clarify the role of ADH on urine osmolalities throughout the nephron. So please let me know if you have any more questions about this material.